fiance told me that she's calling me an abuser and a racist. So not only was I being physically abused, but I was pretty much being like R-A-P-E, rain and petals eavesdrop. I used the wrong word. Rain and petals eavesdrop. I used the wrong word. That got my blood rain boiling. Because that's not true. Hi Amber, it's the Snowflake here, number one Ambaby on the internet. Shaped by the algorithm, y'all. Someone recently told me about that and I had to look it up. I was like, what is that? So, I don't know, hopefully you see this and hopefully you see the, the, the little clip of you from, from five years ago. I watched the first episode and I had a few tears, I'm not gonna lie. Talking about how you don't want to die early, because um, there's uh, there's quite a few people worried about you. Um, I get lots of comments and, and discuss with people. Um, yeah, there are a lot of people concerned. You are getting older. Everyone's getting. I'm getting older. I'm starting to get grey hairs in my beard now. Might have to watch the next one. Hopefully, it gives you a little push to um to to lose some weight. I am known as Mr. Snowflake online and I make documentaries about interesting people. It was actually through a friend of mine um, how I discovered Anne Boleyn Reed. You gotta fight for your right to Amber, yeah. Yeah, so he was a bit stuck for who to do next. Um, and so I came up with a list of different lol cows. Um, I think Boogie was on there, Chris Chan, uh, and Amber was right at the bottom. Uh, and then he picked Amber, and I was shocked because I thought she was boring. I think she'll be watching this. Hi, Amber! Oh, sorry, we haven't even mentioned the t shirts. We've gone full, we've gone full Am Baby. These are professional t shirts. Is mine see through? See through. I just wonder if you can see me next. Uh, what were my first impressions of Amber? Um, I remember liking her. I liked her at first. Uh, I made, I think I made a few videos uh, showing some support for her. Uh, I did a couple of community posts where I was, I was rooting for her. I was on her side. And I, I actually, I really, really meant all the videos and the posts because Amber was talking about how. She was gonna die. She was, she was carrying too much weight. She was so unhealthy, and it did. She, she, it looked like she was close to death. She looked like that for a while now, but I, I genuinely supported her at the beginning, um, and even even Jimmy did. Jimmy really meant the support. Uh, yeah. So in the start, I, I really enjoyed um, the fact that he'd started covering Amber because um, I'm a big fan of BBWs, which is big, beautiful women. I was going to say though, should we wear the Amber shirts to the gym? Yes. Really? Yeah. What do people look? Well, I'll just go back off here. <laughs> yeah, go on, should we wear, the, wear these to the gym? Yes. Right, Amber, we're going to go to the gym for you. We're going to do Amber reps. Actually, tell you what, we're going to try really hard at the gym for you, Amber. Uh, hopefully that inspires Amber. I think you're going to say Amber, aren't you? <laughs> I remember the exact moment I stopped supporting her, and it was it was during a live stream. Yeah, I'll do a I'll do a whole Corbin. 
I know I, I know I ripped up the the, the Am Baby shirt I had. I, I ripped it trying to be funny and uh, trying to make the viewers laugh. But that is, I remember it. That is when I genuinely thought I'm done with her. Because because people have warned me for a long time what she was like, and I thought, no, no, we're going to see the good in her. But when they told me watch how she treats her girlfriends, I watched and. Yeah, I know during that live stream we were watching how she was treating Becky, but people had already warned me how she treated her first partner, Casey. Are y'all Native American? I'm, I'm black, white, Filipino, and Mexican. My mom is, are, do you have any Native American? Cause this, my mom, my mom right here, she's the one who adopted me when I was a baby. Casey, known before his transition as Cassidy, was raised in Arizona by his adoptive mother, Nadine Cordero. Growing up, Casey struggled in school and was often bullied. You know, I did a lot of dumb stuff in school. I wasn't really great in school. I was picked on and, you know, I, I made poor choices. The world won't care about your struggles. I hate to say it, but it's true. The world doesn't care about your struggles. They don't care where you came from or where you're going. But you know what? You can care for you. Make your life worth living for you if not for anyone else make your life the best you can for you casey would seek refuge from his struggles through the use of online chat rooms it was there where he would meet amberlyn reed casey and amber having shared experiences with bullying and foster care instantly connected Casey, who was just 15 years old at the time, entered an online relationship with Amber, who was almost two years his senior. My first true, true, true relationship was with a girl named Cassidy. We met online. Oh, we were together from 2008 to 2011. So almost four years, three, three and a half years. I met her online at 15. I met her in person at 16. While we were in online relationship, a long distance relationship. I would send her pictures of my face. I made her understand that I was a bigger girl. I told her my weight and she really, really accepted that. After about a year of being in this online relationship, the pair would finally get to meet in person. When I first met her in person, it was in California because me and my mom went to California to visit my Nana and she lived in California. So she came and visited for a little bit. Which was cool, we had a good time, you know, it was a good time. She told me that the first time she ever met me in person, she did not find me attractive whatsoever. I was freaking so shocked, so hurt, and so surprised. She was purely setting me down, and she was being honest that when we met in person, I wasn't attractive to her at all. Okay, when it comes to physical attraction, let me tell you guys this. I look for some, at, at, at one point her, her personality was, you know, I felt for her personality. I don't fall for someone's looks. I don't fall for, they, you know, yeah, you know, keep up with, with you know, high, high jeans, you know, whatever, but I don't fall for someone's looks. I fall for their heart. I fall for their soul. I fall for their personality. It completely lowered my self-esteem a great deal. And I was never the same since then. Don't get me wrong, as time went on and we lived together, like, obviously she started finding me attractive because she started to get to know my personality. It still really scarred me. Despite the lack of physical attraction coming from Casey, the pair would still carry on their relationship. After meeting her for the first time in July in California, um, she was going to come down for a month because I was going to take her to an anime convention. Stay a month, whatever. She was supposed to go back. I was there for like two weeks and I called my mom and I was like, oh my God, I miss you so much, you know, because I was living with her and my grandma at the time. And on the phone, she told me, your grandma said, you can't come back to Oklahoma. You can't come live with us. And I was like, what? Like, where do I go? Her grandmother said she couldn't come back. Yeah, well, I've always wondered why 
her grandma never wanted her back. Um, did we ever find out? Cassidy's mom was pissed because I think she knew right then and there she's gonna have to take on like me. I think it was like 450 square feet. There were like no doors. Um, Cassidy and I ended up having to use the living room as our bedroom. I was, I was 16 at the time. My mom was mad. She, I mean, we didn't have a lot of money. When she's talking about her small apartment, we didn't have a lot of money. We were poor. It didn't have a bedroom door. It was like a studio with like a wall, like breaking off the uh, living room and bedroom. So she had a 16 year old to raise plus she was just getting into a new my mom was just getting into a new relationship and then all of a sudden there's someone else that's there that she needs to make sure to feed yeah it made her mad but i fought for amber to be there because she didn't have nowhere to go i didn't have a job i didn't have anywhere to go i had no car i had nothing and i just got done being in a foster care so i was like oh my gosh like because being in foster care like you're very, like, taken care of in a sense, you know? But, you know, it was whatever. I fought for her to stay. I didn't want her to be homeless. It was, you know, I felt that was the right thing to do. I was so happy. I was like, oh my god, I'm live with my girlfriend. Like, we're so in love. It's, like, so amazing. And I don't want to say I regretted it, but the things that happened afterwards, I kind of regretted our whole entire relationship. And I hate to say it, but I do regret our whole entire relationship. I do. Now, Nadine, at this point, was already struggling to make ends meet, and now she had to look after her child's adult girlfriend. So now you've got Nadine, Casey, Amber, and Nadine's boyfriend, Dave, all living in this tiny studio apartment. Did you like Amber at first? Yeah. Like this? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. She's nice. No bad for her. Looks good. Yeah, she was nice. Was she verbally abusive? Yeah. Yeah, she touched me. Amber always seemed to be making these disrespectful Facebook posts about Dave and Nadine, talking about how unhappy she was and how much she disliked them. Amber would go on to make videos about her time in Arizona where she would be extremely soft-spoken and talking about how she was a victim of abuse while living there. She hated me, um, so did her um, boyfriend. Uh, several times he threatened to kill me. Um, I was abused there a lot um, in several different ways. Um, Big Cake said she said she wasn't allowed to sit on the couch at your house. But my mom never told her she wasn't allowed. It was, my mom never said that. Yeah, it was Dave. Yeah. Did she ever break any of your furniture, said Zach? Yeah. I'm scared that I'm going to break a chair one day. I've never broken furniture in my life. I have never broken a furniture before. Um, a little backstory, I've only broken a couple things in my life. Like, I got this really, 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 really cheap chair at Walmart one time, and I used it a lot, and I ended up breaking it. Why did they hate each other, Dave and Amber? Um, it's just... Yeah, they just clashed, like... Yeah, she thought she knew everything about everything, every subject. Yeah, I was saying... She tubed it, or she Googled it, or she known the fact. Yeah, my IQ is just, it's just overwhelmed by how smart I am. Amber, who was a legal adult, was given a choice, either go to college or get a job. I did go to college. I was going for my associates in criminal justice. I regret going because I was like forced to go. That's like a whole other story. Yes, my mom said it was either work or go to school because I didn't want her home all day because I was a senior. I was a senior in high school. I, I went home all day. My mom and Dave were tired of her being home all day. My mom and, and Dave wanted her out of the house because she stayed in the house, God, 24-7 on her phone. Without Nadine, Amber would have been homeless, but Amber still thought it was acceptable to go online and complain. 
uh, like this one in particular. Um, you know, maybe if I didn't live with tolls, I wouldn't have to wake up at 5 a.m. to catch the bus to be at school at 9. Maybe if I didn't live with apples, I'd get a ride. Is she joking? Without them, she'd be living in a cardboard box. So everybody who was living there, Dave, Nadine, Casey, were gracious enough to let Amber stay there and not be homeless. She was given the choice, college or work. She chose college, which didn't bring anything into the household. And Amber still felt it was perfectly acceptable to just go online and speak about them the way she did. Amberlynn is a liar. Amberlynn made a Facebook post saying she wanted to punch your mom in the face. Yeah. Oh, oh hell no. No, no, no. Don't yeah. do that. So not only would she contribute nothing financially, she would complain about them online, and to top it all off, she was incredibly lazy. Christina said that she even clean at any point in your house. Sometimes she'd do it on her own accord, but 90% of the time we had to argue with it. Did she give y'all a hard time about cleaning? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cleaning, it was an argument. She'd avoid it. Did Amber ever cook clean anything productive at all? She cooked. She never cooked dinner for everybody. She cooked if she was hungry. It was more of an argument, Mom. Like, I had to argue with her to clean. I she was letting me do her own things for sure. Um, she said she was forced to wash everyone's clothes at your house. No, she wasn't. She We would we asked her just to wash her clothes, or, like, I would go to a laundromat. But she never put her clothes away. I was doing her laundry. Yeah. It's the bigger laundry. Rub your feet. Massaged her. Massaged her. <laughs> that remind me that I massaged her feet. You never seen her feet, Mom. This would not be the only cleaning Amber would neglect to do. Even though Amber does claim to in fact shower, it is well documented that that is not the case. Every day I was bullied. Um, I was the smelly kid. I was the fat girl. And then Mimi said, wait, she stank, didn't she? Yeah. I do shower every single day, every single day, so don't get this like wrong. It's just my hair and my face is not washed every single day, or you know what I'm saying. But um, my makeup does come off by itself within one to two days, three days, somewhere around that time. The yeah. showering was hard to get her to do. One of the reasons why Amber and Nadine didn't get along was because of Amber's poor hygiene. And that's understandable when you consider the small space they were all living in. Did Amber shower at all? Just be honest, Mom. Yeah, she did, but we had to, like, yeah, like, argue with her, you know. She'd say, okay, I'll do it right now. Okay, I'll do it right now. I'll do it right now. And, but yeah, not every day, though, but... This unhygienic habit of Amber's would follow her for many years to come, and in one video, Amber would confess to having lied to her audience about her personal hygiene. There was a large portion of 2019, if not the whole 2019, where I literally couldn't shower. But yeah, I would bathe in bed, and it wouldn't even be frequently. Didn't she, didn't she go on to make a video of it in the shower to prove that she showers? Hello? Is anyone home? Ah! Oh, Amberlynn said shower with me and she meant it. It wasn't just Dave and Nadine who Amber was unhappy with. She was also extremely unhappy with Casey. She would even go as far as uploading a video titled, I was in an abusive relationship, I was raped, which has now since been deleted. So I was recently talking to someone who had no idea that I was in an abusive 
relationship before and they told me how girls who stay in abusive relationships are just lazy and that they like to be abused. Now I from first hand witnessed my dad and my mother my whole childhood. I told myself I will never be with someone who lays a hand on me. My first like live-in relationship was with a girl named Cassidy. I feel very um, strongly about this and I feel like it's okay for me to say her name because she's transgender now so she's not Cassidy no longer so I'm able to say her name because she's a one was person like Cassidy is no longer here anymore obviously I'm not gonna say his new name because we're talking about her transgender talk is too confusing so we're just gonna leave it as that um so after about mm, I want to say six months or so Things started, you know, kind of changing and shifting. I don't really know if I want to like go into like grave detail. Um, we still loved each other a lot. Um, after six months, we'd been together for over two years and we were living together and this and that. And I noticed we started arguing a little bit more just over stupid, stupid, stupid stuff. Like in, I could tell you that right now. I still remember the first time she ever got physical. We had a laundry room in the apartment complex we were living in and we were walking to the laundry room and I remember back then I would do our laundry for us. I didn't really like people touching my laundry. I still really don't but I let Destiny do it because I trust her. But I had this weird thing with like people touching my laundry. Whatever. So. Well that's not true because we've got evidence of Amber not doing her own laundry. Was that undies? Mm -hmm. Oh baby. Chris always does the laundry. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it like that. Crystal's the laundry machine. Sometimes I help her. You can put the um, kitchen towels right here and I'll put them in the... I do help sometimes. She was upstairs folding laundry without me because laundry is her um, chore per se. Mine is like dishes and feeding animals and stuff like that. So I like to do my own laundry. So I'm able to put it in the washer just fine. But Becky has to get it out of the washer for me. I can't, one, reach my arm in and bend down and grab my laundry because my stomach is in the way. I can't even do my own laundry fully by myself. Even in recent videos, we've seen Amber struggling to do her own laundry. So I guess I pull out this little guy here, liquid only. Okay, there's like a little... This is liquid detergent. Okay, so I guess that goes in there. Oh my God, watch me just spill everywhere. Oh, there's like a little max level. Is there a place for me to put these guys? So it's set on normal. Okay, so should that just be it, you guys? I should just press start and call it a day. I don't know. Why are you asking me? Um, she was helping me carry I guess laundry to laundry room. I don't remember really what we were arguing about. I want to say this happened. It's been like six, seven years. So memories are kind of like fade in here and there. But I do remember us being on the sidewalk. And I remember her dropping what was in her hands. And she took me by the throat. And she started yelling at me. I was like, what? And like, I was like crying. Like she literally was having me by the throat, just like screaming at me. And then, you know, she let go obviously. And I think I was so shocked and so numb to the situation that I kind of just let it be. Honestly, that is the truth. She never really did that again. She would randomly like pinch me if I made her really mad and I didn't even think anything of that then either. Honestly, I didn't at all. We've been together for about three years now at this point, and I feel myself slowly, I stopped being like sexually attracted to her. I loved her though. I know that. I don't know if it was like a best friend thing, but I stopped just feeling that like connection, I guess. So when it came to intimacy, I wanna say about, a little bit after like two years of being together, it started to dwindle. It was definitely my fault. This is when things got really bad. <laughs> so, 
not attracted to Casey, but is going online talking about strap-ons and boom bangalanging. Oof. I don't even know how to share this, but I'm gonna have to. Um, okay, so Cassidy was very sexually strived, like, is that even a thing? I don't know. She really thought I was attractive. She really was sexually attracted to me and she always wanted to like have sex. She told me that the first time she ever met me in person, she did not find me attractive whatsoever. And I stopped feeling that for her. No. Said you wanted to use a strap on? Like I didn't tell her that. I would just like make up things like, oh, I don't feel good or, oh, I'm on my period. Like even though I wasn't. And just little things like that. And it made her pissed when you say no to someone whether you've been with them for like a month or whether you've been been with them for like six years if you say no to a sexual act your partner should accept that that is where i firmly stand wow what a hot take i think that's the law but she didn't and she would literally sit there and beg me at first it was like cute little begs like oh come on baby whatever but then as time gradually went on it became, you're gonna f***ing touch me whether you like it or not. And I was like, you can't force me. And little did I know she can. Um, that's when she started punching me a lot. She would she would aim for my belly. Um, I don't think she ever actually hit me in the face. Isn't that something you would remember? Getting punched in the face, getting hit in the face. I don't think she ever actually hit me in the face. Why did she say, I, I don't think? You would remember, wouldn't you? I don't think. Her favorite spot was my stomach. She would punch me really hard in my stomach. She'd punch me like around right here a lot. She'd punch me on my arms. She would continuously do it until I agreed to make love to her or have sex, whatever you want to consider it. So not only was I being physically abused, but I was pretty much being like, that is what I consider it. It was such like a bad, just like a bad mixture of everything. And this would go on. This would happen probably weekly. Um, God, here are the tears. Where? I was trying to be strong for this video. <laughs> a lot of people would ask, why didn't I hit her back? Why didn't I leave her in that, you know, in that stance? I loved her. Um, at the time, I was confused. I didn't love her, like, as a girlfriend. I just loved her as a person. We had such amazing times that I just felt like maybe one day she'll stop being like this. You know, maybe one day she'll stop forcing me to have sex with her. One day she'll stop hitting me. Not only was she hitting me because I wouldn't have sex with her, she was hitting me if I wouldn't do the dishes on time. She would push me up against counters. And one thing she never did was she never like called me names. Never. And I was like living in that like moment of six and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me type of thing. Um, where it's like, okay, hitting people, blah, blah, blah. But if like she started emotionally hurting me, then I should leave. Now, Amber says, Casey never called the names. There was, there was no emotional abuse. However, Amber's clearly forgotten all the posts she's made on Ask FM. How did your partner abuse you in Arizona? She would punch me, slap me, scratch me, strangle me, abuse me with her words. Think of someone you dislike. Now try to think of at least one thing that is good slash nice about them. I will not say who this person is because it is just easier that way. You never know who reads your things online. Lol. But I used to live with this person. They would do and say harsh things to me. They practically ruined a few years of my life, making me feel like I was scum of the earth. I would often sit in my tiny bedroom and just do nothing, cry, gain weight, all because of this person. Casey's fault, the weight gain. So there she says, they would do and say harsh things to me. This isn't me catching her out. This is Amber catching herself out. I remember one time particular, I don't remember what the argument was, 
Um, her mom was in her room, a very small apartment. So we were like arguing in whispers, like so she couldn't hear. And I'm pretty sure she got the gist of it because Cassidy started hitting me really hard. It was probably one of the worst ever. I was kind of just like, you know, blocking myself or at least trying to. And Cassidy's mom came in and all she said is, Cassidy, what are you doing? And then walked away. So now, not only does Amber want us to believe that she did her own laundry, which we know isn't true, but she wants us to believe that Nadine came into the room, saw this brutal beating going on, and said, what are you doing? And then just walked out. Maybe it happened, maybe it happened like that. Maybe it didn't. It didn't. The whole time I lived there, I really hoped there was a moment where Cassidy's mom would see. I thought maybe she'd be my hero and like somehow change the way Cassidy treated me. I thought maybe her and I would become closer because she saw I was in a relationship because me and Cassidy's mom were never close. She didn't do anything about it. Oh yeah, to answer the question of like, why didn't I ever hit her back? Because I, <sighs> my brother used to hit me a lot when I was a teenager. He's strong. Like he might be my little brother, but he's my big brother, you know? And um, he would hit me a lot. That's just what he did. And he would emotionally f me up in the head and he did a lot. Like, I felt like my own brother hated me for a while there, but that's a whole other subject. Um, but when he first started hitting me, I would hit him back for like self-defense. And it just made him more angry and more mad. And the punches got worse, the bruises got darker. And I didn't want that with Cassidy. I was scared. I was way too scared to hit back. So I never did. Why does she sound like she's doing my um, calling in sick to work voice? I can't come in for me shift. The bruises got darker. I think what drew the line with me and Cassidy was um, her and her mom. This was like one of the worst nights in the world. Like I can't even... Okay, Cassidy was mad about something. She pushed me up against the counter. Um, she got a knife and was throwing it in my face and saying she was going to stab me. I was like, yeah, right. Like, um. So now, so now Amber wants us to believe that Casey, who has been punching Amber, scratching her, and Amber with words, depending on what time of day you ask Amber. Now Casey's got a knife. She got a knife in front of Amber's face, and Amber doesn't seem too bothered. I'd be more concerned if this person who's been abused has a knife. I'd be really concerned. And then she started really hitting me, like, in my chest and kind of, like, in my boobs. Cassidy's mom came out and blamed it all on me. And then Cassidy's mom threw this, like, big, clear ashtray right to my head. Again, it's just, it's so strange, this, this traumatic thing of, well, it sounds traumatic, having an ashtray thrown off your head. It sounds like it would really hurt, and, but the way Amber's describing it, it's almost like, I don't know, it's almost like it's a Laurel and Hardy sketch. It's just something, it's just something comical, the way she, boop, like, what? I don't know. Maybe I'm biased, but that doesn't, I'm not getting genuine trauma from any of this. It hurt so bad and in that moment I was like why am I here what am I doing the only people who can feel this way and understand what I'm saying is people who have been in an abusive relationship as much as like your boyfriend or your girlfriend will hit you you still love them and it's 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 so unhealthy and I just want to tell you guys from first hand that if anyone emotionally hurts you, sexually hurts you, or physically hurts you, don't stand for it. Don't, because it ruins you. And through everything, like, you find it so hard to trust people and it's so hard to open up. And you have this, like, guard up that could really just mess up your world. And it, it just, it's not good. I've actually seen better acting from Tommy Wiseau. Oh, hi, Casey. Is that a knife? Uh, but I've seen Amber actually upset. Yeah, I like my parents. 
Did I just choose a different outlet, you know? And um, it's like, my brother, he is an addict, but he chose drugs. Her and her mom. This was like one of the worst nights in the world. Like, I can't even. <laughs> and I didn't want to talk about any of this. Oh my god, my mascara. <laughs> nobody, and I mean nobody, deserves to be hit by their boyfriend or girlfriend or their wife or husband. Nobody. I have learned a lot being with Cassidy and um if you guys are wondering, yes, she is now a he, and um, it's been a long time, six years since I was with her, and um, we talk on Facebook here and there. What? <laughs> we, we still chat now and again. This is a person, apparently, who has beaten her, had a knife at her throat, um, abused Amber with his words. Maybe. Um, Rita, all this horrible stuff, and we, we still chat now and again. And then and then Amber has the nerve to upload this video, claiming I was raped. We still chat now and again on Facebook. Again, it doesn't sound like the actions of somebody who has gone through this this ordeal, this, these years of abuse. Things are very different, and um, she regrets everything she did. We still chat now and again. It's different. Yeah, it should be different. It's ridiculous. It's, 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 it's insane. But I'm kind of at that point where I might cry about it now. You, did, you didn't even cry then? But I've healed and I'm stronger because of it and I've learned because of it. And I just figured I'd share the story with you guys because that is a big part of my life that I went through. Me and Cassidy were together for four years before I was like, eh. Closing the door, I'm done. It does not matter at all that if we were in a relationship or that we're lesbian, she forced me. And a lot of people can question, how is that possible? It's very possible. It made me feel so like degrading and gross and grummy and I'm done. But um, I just figured I'd share this with you guys and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Uh, yeah, I loved it. Hilarious. Before I got into doing YouTube, I worked with vulnerable kids and adults. And I've heard a few, I've heard quite a few stories similar to what Amma's telling here. And not once have I ever not believed anybody who's told me that type of stuff, not once. It's never popped into my head that I should not believe this person. You're always left with, I don't know, a lump in your throat or a bit teary. You go home thinking about it. But when I'm listening to this story from Amber, it's so unbelievable the way she's telling it. The things, well, she catches herself out. She, she, she didn't, she doesn't let anybody do her laundry. We know that's not true. Uh, Casey never abused Amber with, with his words. But then in earlier posts, apparently Casey did. It's so unbelievable. <sighs> and you don't want to say anybody's lying about something like this. You just automatically want to go, oh my God, that, it's true, it's horrible, but... I don't, I, I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Casey found out about Amber's video when people began sending the video to Casey's family. Casey would go on to make a video and live streams denying Amber's claims. Today, um, I was told by my fiance, someone messaged her on Facebook and it was a link to a video. It was a video of my ex, my ex Amber. My fiance told me 
that she's calling me an abuser. And that got my blood boiling. Because that's not true. 100% not true. It pissed, pissed me off to no end. Everything in that video was such bull that I can't even, I can't even describe the bull that was in that video. So, it was probably three months, three, four months after we started living together. We were up one night. I don't remember why we argued. I don't. But she grabbed my arm with her nails. First time. Any physical that was negative. And I remember that clearly. It shocked me. Now, watching Casey's video, it's very different to Amber's. The use of language is different. Amber is very, I think, I think, and maybe. Memories are, are fading here. We see this idea that words and phrases that leave options open are connected to lying, like using the words may or might, or the phrases I think so, or if I remember correctly. I don't think she ever actually hit me in the face. Memories are kind of like fade in here and there. This would happen probably weekly. I think what drew the line with me and Cassidy was. So the idea here is that the individual is keeping their options open. So if they get caught in a lie, they can pivot and get away from that. Whereas Casey is, I remember that clearly. It's a big difference. I, I didn't know what to make of it, really. I'm 16 years old. I knew what physical was, but not really. I mean, I was a kid. I was a child. So I just assumed, okay, I made her mad. Now, the thing was she said with the laundry, that's a big false. Big false. Want to know how I know that? Because me and my mom would do her laundry. Me and my mom would go do laundry. She wasn't getting up to do laundry. She maybe did it a couple of times, a handful of times, probably counting on my one hand. She didn't do it all the time, at all. And me dropping the bag and choking her, I never, ever did that, ever. I, I mean, what's the reason for me to do that? I mean, I, I didn't do it. And I don't know where this story came from, I didn't do it, at all. Now, the places she said about being hit, those were on me. Those were the exact places she hit me. I was the one being abused. And I will say this, I may, I may have laid a hand on her a few times. That was in self-defense. I didn't do it, and I damn well did not rape her. I did not rape her. Period. One time, when my mom and Dave were out, I don't know why we argued, but I was put on the bed. She wailed on me. Beat me real bad. I remember this clear as day. Memories are kind of like fade in here and there. There was, our bed was in the living room. Next to the bed was a dresser. In front of the dresser was a table. Between the table and the bed was her, over me, wailing on me. At that point, I was 17 years old. Casey claimed that Amber was actually copying the abuse that he suffered. And it wasn't the only thing that Amber would copy. She told me that she had anxiety. I, ha I suffer from anxiety. I suffer from panic and anxiety disorder. I was diagnosed with anxiety slash panic disorder. After I was diagnosed, so... Um, today I'm gonna tell you guys my coming out story. This video is about my coming out story. My mom found out I liked girls because I wrote a, a love note to Lucy. <sighs> I was writing a letter to my friend about her saying how I do like this girl duh, 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 and I don't know how to tell my mom, I don't know how to tell my parents. And I left it in my pants and she went to do laundry and well... The notes, I guess I never ended up giving it to my friend and I left it in my pants pocket and my mom did my laundry. She found it, so... You can only imagine what happened there. 
and I I was trying to lie to her at first. I finally said, yeah, but I did the safe route. At least I believe it was a safe route, and I came out as bisexual. I had explained to her that no, I don't just like women. I am bisexual. But anyway, based on coming out to parents, um, my mom actually found out through a note I wrote to a girl. But coming out to your parents, it's um, it's whatever you feel comfortable with, really. It's 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 you gotta trust that they'll understand. Oddly similar to what Amberlynn said about her coming out too. What do you mean? What's similar, Linda? What is the worst thing Amberlynn ever did to you? We got in an argument one night. And I forgot what the argument was about. And it was already dark outside. My mom and her boyfriend went home. All I remember was I was on I was I I, I wouldn't necessarily say thrown, but I like fell back on the bed and she just continued to hit, 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 hit. Like God, I was just like trying to at least block my face. But just hit, hit, slap, slap, and then she like slammed the door and took off walking to the store. That was the worst that was the scariest and worst night ever her over me hitting me i remember that clearly it i couldn't i couldn't take it like i didn't understand like it just escalated it escalated so quickly and i didn't know, i didn't know what was going on i was i was 16 17 you know 15 16 17 I, almost 18 years old she left before i turned 18 i didn't know who would believe me all that i knew is my friends believed me because i would come to school with bruises up and down on my arm trying to make excuses like oh i fell off my bike oh i fell off my skateboard my friends asked me what's wrong what, what, what happened to you eventually they figured it out so every time i would come to school upset in tears amber again shrug didn't say anything my mom figured it out later on, but I'd have to hide it from her. Why? Because I didn't want her mad. I didn't want her upset. I didn't want her to worry about me. She had so much other things to worry about. And then I found out about the his cousin would get bruises. And then she would lie to me and say, you know, stuff. In her video, she said your mom walked in on you beating Amber up. I never beat her up. No. And the thing about my mom throwing a glass ashtray at her head? No. Uh-uh. She was very disrespectful to my mom. She threw a glass cup at my mom. It shattered on the wall. There was still a hallmark when they moved out because of that. Can your mom tell us her point of view of the ashtray incident? I don't even forget what we were arguing about. I don't even know what you guys were arguing about. Maybe something. But she threw it and she... It ended up being a lawmaking big cold one. Yeah, it was like, oh, it was a glass one. It shattered on impact, too. Yeah, she said you threw it at her. No. She would get mad and yell because of how disrespectful she was being, but she never laid a hand on Amber. Ever. Never. My mom's boyfriend and her, and Amber didn't get along. There was a lot of fights. I defended Amber. Does she say that? No. Does she say how I defended her against everything else that was put her way? How I lost friends over defending her ways? No. Why? Because she wants to play victim. According to Cassie, there was more than just physical abuse. When you were with Amber, was she emotionally abused? Not just physically, but emotionally. Uh, yes, she was. Yes, she was. The story about that, how I learned that she was that as well, is because uh, I was having anxiety attack. I called her. Uh, I stayed home from school that day. I called her. I was, like, really upset. And she yelled at me over the phone and made it seem like it was my fault. So, and it was just, it was a, it was a lot. It was a, a roller coaster of emotions. One time, when I was getting ready for school, Amber went through my phone. Want to know how I know that? I got went to school. My friend CJ sees me, punches me in the arm. What the f did you give Amber my number for? 
What? I didn't give Amber your number and you don't like her. She don't like you. Why should she have your number? Shows me. Bitch, my friend out. And I texted Amber. The fuck is wrong with you? What the hell? Why are you messaging CJ? How'd you get her number? I went through your phone while you're getting ready for school. When I would hang out with my best friend Alex. She's been my best friend since high school. And all of a sudden I get text messages an hour later me out for hanging out with her. She went as far as to accuse me of sleeping with my best friend. I couldn't understand why this girl that I cared about at one point was doing this. I couldn't. And I lost a lot of friends because I guess, I, I don't know if she did that to more of my friends or not. But me and my friend CJ are still friends. I still have a, a good amount of friends, but I don't understand the reason why she did that at all. Did she try to take my friends as her own? Um, she tried to make friends with my friends, but they seen how she was faster than I did, so no, she didn't take any of my friends. And then one time, I, I love to draw. You guys see my drawings? What happened was, I was drawing, I was drawing a collage of Sailor Uranus, like, let me get a paper. Like, it was like, it was like as big as this. And we got in an argument, and what she did, did was, here, I'll use the baby. Thing as an example what she did was she got a she got a pencil and she just brought across it and she locked herself in the bathroom she she ruined my picture like it took forever to draw that and she ruined it i was told i should share this with you guys as my supporters it was a list i made when i was in the therapy this is all the stuff that i, I uh had to deal with. Hey, I, I, I'm sorry. Get a little emotional. So here's part of the list. Now it is hard to read, but some of the things on that list are: ask to cuddle, do whatever she asks, spoil her, do things she likes, don't bore her with my interests. Uh, don't talk much, speak when spoken to, don't spend money on myself, and don't make her repeat herself. And this was a, especially the part where I thought it was normal to be hit at one That was bad. So somebody asks Amber a question on the website Ask FM. They say, my husband hits me but then says sorry and then again gets and violent because I can't forgive him so fast. He loves me to bits, otherwise what should I do? I hit him back too and called him names only because I was angry. And Amber's response, people do things and say things that they don't mean when they're angry. I'm not saying it's right because it's not. I constantly say horrible things when I'm angry at someone. I then later regret it. Words hurt worse than fists do, but we all seem to never speak upon that kind of violence. I'm one of them because my honest opinion is never be with someone who abuses you all the time. I'm not saying physical violence is okay, but people do slip. A push, a shove, a scratch, if it happens once or twice, it's something you'll always remember, but it's something that just happened. It doesn't make you an ab But if it constantly happens, don't allow yourself to be in that situation. No one deserves it. This, uh, I look at now, this was, this was not a relationship. This was slave. This was slavery. And at one point, I really did think it was normal to be hit. And that was not right. According to Casey, Amber had been physically and emotionally abusive, and apparently had also been unfaithful as well. When we were first dating, I got a message from her, upset. She made out with a girl while we were dating, while she was still in California. The last time I cheated, 
was about 16, 17 years old. Um, I was in a long distance relationship with, um, as you guys know, his name is Casey. Before we met each other in person, when I was, uh, you know, when I was a sophomore here and she was still in California, and then Amber told me she out twice with, with one of her friends that was a girl in, in a hot tub. And so that, that hurt me. Where is the wildest place you have had sex? I have a dream though, hot tub dream. We don't need to discuss that hot tub dream. Though. I actually posted um, on, what was it? Instagram, sorry, I'm starting to. Um, I posted on Instagram, uh, my yearbook, and it was like uh, my yearbook quotes and like questions, like, what do you love? And at the time I put Amara because um, that was the name that he gave me for him. And when I filled that out, I was 17 years old. Um, so yeah, I I did cheat on him um, when I was 16. Did I get mad? I got upset, but I was 15. So what am I gonna do? Forgive, forget, you're my girlfriend. I was a child. When me and him were actually living together, um, I several times tried to break up with him and then I would feel guilty and stay. Uh, she felt guilty, so she stayed. I think reading between the lines, she had nowhere else to go. Let's be honest. So I suggested, okay, let's be in an open relationship then because I was not happy. I was, I'm not going to get into why I wasn't happy, okay? Because we, we already know and yeah, so. Amber felt comfortable enough with her and abuse to suggest an open relationship. The open, la the open relationship thing? That, I will, I will talk th about that. Yes, that was true, because I felt like if I allowed it, it, like, it would help us in a way. Again, I was young and dumb. I was young and dumb. When you were in an open relationship with Amber, or your whole relationship, or was it just after Tristan? It wasn't for our whole relationship. It, it started with that, you know the one I call Paige? I know it's not her name. Before Crystal, there was another girl. Another girl. Well, she was with me. Her name was Paige or something. I know it was a four letter name. I'm just gonna call her Paige because that's the name I, I remember. That Paige girl sent her money, sent her a Walmart gift card. She sent her things. Yeah, while well, she was with me. We weren't supposed to be in an open relationship after that. And then she had two with Crystal. Yeah, Amber and Crystal would flirt publicly. Um, I know a lot of people keep getting that confused and say I cheated. Like, why would I online like openly cheat on my partner. That is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. And then she met Crystal. Now she was talking to Crystal about six or seven months before we, we broke up. No, actually probably longer than that. Probably almost a year. Talking to her almost a year before me and her broke up. Um, we actually met online. At the time, I was in a relationship, and Crystal, I added her, I guess, and she sent me a, f um, a message. She did flirt with me a little. I tried to explain to her, I was in a relationship. I'm not like that. I do not cheat. Um, I didn't want to cheat on my girlfriend. As time went on, the relationship I was currently in was really just going downhill. She made me realize what true love was because I did fall in love with her. This might sound bad and crazy and weird, but with the, with the permission of the girl I was with, she allowed Crystal to come and meet me. When Crystal came to visit Amber in Arizona, Amber admitted through an Ask of M post that the two of them had been intimate during that time, even though Amber and Crystal were not supposed to be in an open relationship. I don't know, we had sparks and it just, I, I honestly never felt so happy in my life and everything just was perfect. And I mean, I felt bad for the girl I was in the relationship with. Crystal was there to witness it physically, the things that Casey put me through. And I wish, I wish so badly, I'm sorry, baby. I wish so badly that Crystal wasn't as shy as she was because she's told me before, I would love to make a video, but I just can't because she has really bad social anxiety. She doesn't have to do a video. Uh, she could do a community post, a Facebook post, 
doesn't have to be a video. We all know she's shy. Amber keeps saying that Crystal saw firsthand how you treated her. What do you think she's talking about? Oh, I know exactly what she's talking about. It was when we were at the anime convention. And I like anime. I love anime. I'm a nerd. But we were at an anime convention and I was having an anxiety attack. And I, we, me and Amber were still together and I wanted my girlfriend at the time to comfort me. And Crystal got mad at it. Now I understand why Crystal got mad about that. Because Amber wanted to, you know, spend time with her and she came down for Amber, blah, blah, blah. But that's, that's what it was. So whatever she told Crystal, she told Crystal. Crystal bought her so many things when we were together. So many things. Crystal would even pay Amber's phone bill, something Amber had complained about previous when Amber's foster mother paid the bill late. stands out because it's the most messed up one was the freaking iPod touch she was on the phone with her like it, she, there was an argument starting so she goes outside talking to her comes in oh, I made her cry what happened what, what what made her cry what the hell crystal was gonna buy her an iPod touch the argument was over how much gigabytes it had and she got mad because Crystal asked, do you want this certain gigabyte or the 32 one, you know, the highest one? And she told Crystal, asking me that is like asking if you want a pink purse. She was so rude about that. It wasn't just, I mean, she went off after saying the pink purse thing. She went off on this poor girl and made her cry. It was over $200. Over $200 this girl is spending on Amber. That's not even with her yet. You should just be grateful. For what you're getting, why are you being like this? Six months after Crystal visited Amber, Amber made a Facebook post claiming she was now officially in an open relationship. Two days after posting about her new relationship status, Amber and Casey would break up, and Amber would be headed to Virginia to be with Crystal. This further backs up Casey's claim that their open relationship had ended after Amber's fling with Paige. Now Amber likes to claim that the last time she cheated on anybody was when she was 16 years old. However, according to Amber's own Facebook posts, she cheated on Casey with Crystal when she was in her 20s. So Casey and Amber enter an online relationship. Amber cheats on Casey with a girl in a hot tub before they meet. Casey and Amber begin an in-person relationship. Then Amber cheats on Casey with this page girl Amber and Casey then enter a brief open relationship, and the open relationship ends after Paige and Amber break up. Amber then meets Crystal online. Amber and Crystal flirt publicly on Facebook, despite what Amber says. Crystal comes to Arizona to meet Amber. Amber admits her and Crystal were intimate. Then Amber and Casey enter another very brief open relationship, and two days later, Amber and Casey break up, and Amber heads to Arizona to be with Crystal. I just had to like clarify that, that I'm not a cheater, and um, like I'm 32 years old, and I haven't cheated since I was 16. That's a lie. After four years of dating, their terrible relationship would finally come to an end. I was a senior in high school. We had the homecoming party, whatever. I was a part of the anime club and the LGBT club. So I was doing things for both of us. I ended up staying late because there, there was a dance afterwards, but I didn't want to go to dance. But I ended up staying late. And I came home. We got in a huge argument about that, about me being out late. That's what led us breaking up, was that fact. And she broke up with me that night, went with Crystal next day. What was it? That's not why she broke up with Casey. It's because she had, in the wings, Crystal. I don't know if Crystal had to buy two plane tickets. All I know is we broke up the 
next day she gets on a she gets in a cab to the airport. She's with Crystal. She moved in with Crystal. Now a week after the breakup, Amber posts to Facebook saying how losing Casey is like losing a best friend. And that doesn't sound like it's a totally different version, isn't it, from the video she's made here. It sounds like she's just escaped with her life. This this horribly relationship for four years. She's escaped with her life. She just get out of it. And then a week later, I'm losing my best friend. So there's reasons why I doubt this story. Um, and that's a big one. They may have broken up, but this would not be the last time the pair would speak. I mean, she came to me after freaking three years of not talking. Three, four years of not talking. I get a random message from her one day after her and Crystal broke up. And I'm like, why are you messaging me? Because you were an important part of my life. And I said, at one point, not anymore. I got a few messages after that. And I tried to help her with destiny, the whatever thing. Despite Amber claiming to have been in an abusive relationship and multiple times, Amber unbelievably messaged Casey asking for sex tips. I know this is probably weird, but I really need to talk about this. So you're still the only person I've let touch me. I never even let Crystal, even after all the time we were together. I was too scared, too self-conscious, etc. I really want Destiny, the girl I'm going to be with, to be the next person I allow to do that to me. I'm scared though. Like what do I do? I feel like I smelled bad when you did it to me. I shower every day now, so I'm different than I used to be. But it still worries the out of me. Again, I know this is so weird. You're the first person I trust to talk to about this though. Actually, the only person. And Casey replied, um, okay, uh, I'm at a loss for words. She's asked for sex tips. It is unbelievable. That's bad. <laughs> no, I believe my last message on there was embarrassing enough. And yes, I was I was uh, undecided about posting it. Because it is embarrassing. But that showed I didn't rape her. So I had to. I didn't want to. I mean, that was the proof right there. There's even a post where Amber says that rapists should get the death penalty. But then Amber is talking to Casey on Facebook and thinking she's the only person I can trust with sex tips. Maybe she wants Casey put to death after she's gotten the sex tips. She's just going to have to Google uh, BBW sex tips. I know some good sites. <laughs> Text me. Casey would go on to share more screenshots from Amber after his rebuttal video. WTF, you know that you're lying in that video. No one knew who you were. No one knew who I was talking about in that video. I'm not sure why you'd post a video about that. I wasn't putting you on blast. I didn't want anyone knowing who you were. I deleted the video I made because I did not make it to attack you. I made it to share my story. You know exactly what you put me through, Cassidy. Julia knows. Crystal knows. Destiny knows. Even your mom knows, but she'll never admit it. Families stick together, right? Anyways, the video is down because that's a moment in my life that I'll never forget. You might have regretted our relationship, but I don't. I sure as hell am affected by the sh** you did to me.
but you can't go back and change any of it. I just wish you luck and really hope you'll start admitting to the lies you're throwing everywhere. It's disgusting. I will be contacting YouTube because you have my full name in your YouTube video title and that's against the law for the purposes you're using it. You're lying, bullying, and using my full name when I didn't use yours. Delete the video before it gets deleted for you. I deleted mine out of respect for all parties. We seriously need to talk about this because it's gone too far and it's not fair to either of us. After we talk, we don't ever have to talk to each other again. All I've been doing is crying because people on the internet have the audacity to seriously act the way they are. They're saying horrible things to the both of us and snooping in all our business. She is blocked. She is blocked on, on, on everything. I, The last thing I ever got from her, where's my phone? September 16th, 2016. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that. Amber was upset that people were messaging Destiny's family when it was Amber who started this all and Casey only found out about the video from people messaging his fiance. I, okay, I'm going to address Amber if she's watching this. You have the potential to do great things in life. It's never too late to change in life. Be honest. Be honest with your fans, your subscribers. Be truthful. Don't lie. Even after all that had happened, Casey still wanted the best for Amber and wanted her to be honest with her fans for once. However, this was never going to be the case. This is really hard. I'm not a liar. Um, I lied here. Lie. I was protecting my feelings as much as I could. I wanted to protect Becky. Becky and I agreed that we would say that she bought the engagement rings. I know it's selfish of me to do. I do have a list of things I want to talk about. Um, I never said my dad was dead. Never said that <laughs> at all. Um, That's a lie. What's the biggest lie you've ever told? That my dad died. I was young and stupid. I wanted attention from a certain friend. It was honestly the most immature lie I have ever told as well. Not cute. So if you guys remember my aunt situation, this was when I uploaded a video about how my aunt doesn't talk to me anymore because I'm fat. Oh, wow. How old were you? I was like 11. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, that's around the same time where I lied about my middle name. I pushed her away because of just who I am and how I am as a person. Really? Yeah, I was, okay, listen you guys. I was in an all girls group home and they were like, is Amberlynn your first name? Ugh. I told you guys that Destiny has not gained weight since she's been with me. And I'm like, no. I mean, yes. And then they were like, okay, so what's your middle name? I had to think of something really quick. But she has gained weight since she's been with me. Katie. Wow, that's random. Amberlynn Katie Reed. I have been trying to protect her feelings. If you are trying to protect someone and you are lying to protect them, nope. No. Something else I've lied about is the job I had in Florida. I lied to you guys and said I was a full time. I wanted you guys to be proud of me. Um, I don't know. Just a quick little video. Um, I've just seen Amber's Instagram Q and A thing. Um, because somebody asked her, "Do you still stand by your?" Comments where you defended on Ask FM from years ago. is not a matter of you can't help how you feel. Actually, it is. It's a sickness, just like cancer or depression or obesity. It's a sickness. You cannot control sickness. You can get help, but that only goes so far. And to justify it, Amma says that she was by a, f a father's friends. Amber, on your Ask FM, you've got two totally different stories about you being and it's not your father's friends. I've been going through Amber's Ask FM uh, and doing a little series on the second channel. Um, 
reading out the Ask of M stuff and trying to make it funny and silly. Um, but while going through that, uh, there's been some pretty horrible things she said. One of them was, um, she was, she was defending is not like cancer or depression or obesity. It is not like that. You're talking some because they are not comparable. Look into it. As a f victim, I know and it's not like that. It's evil and wrong and should not be treated with sympathy. First of all, don't play victim with someone who has been there, done that. Thank you. Secondly, your opinion is your opinion and mine is mine. Get over it. So when that uploaded, uh, people went to Amber's uh, Instagram and said, Do you still stand by the comments you made about earlier on Ask FM in 2014? Amber says, Trigger warning and trauma dumping. No, I don't. I was 22 years old, trying to understand how people can be so awful. I was actually assaulted by my father's friends when I was younger and talked about this in therapy recently, about how I wish I could understand why those things happened to me. I won't ever understand. These people are sick and forever deserve prison time. In 2014, I was 22. I think she was 23, but uh, I was 22 and highly trying to make excuses for what happened to me. I saw, I saw this, uh, she says, father's friends. Uh, and, and it was very different to what she said on Ask FM. So I made a video. So people, and I know people went to Amber's Instagram and asked her about other two different stories. Um, can you clarify what, what's this? And she's blocked lots of them. Um, blocked them all, blocked me. Um, yeah, and then she, this is very soon after, she clearly asks herself this question. It sounds like she asks herself this question. Uh, on a Q&A, uh, she says, I was altered and over time I was able to remember things I couldn't before. Amber says, I'm so sorry you experienced that. I also completely relate to this. My therapist has taught me more about how trauma can mess with your memory pretty bad. And recounting the events that gave you trauma don't always look the same each time because you sometimes remember all the details and sometimes you don't. Just remember not to be hard on yourself. I beat myself up way too much in the past about the essay I've experienced in my life and my memories around it. I'm just grateful for my mom because I told her about it when I was 12. And from that point on, I had someone in my corner. I was afraid to tell anyone else. If you or someone you know is experiencing an essay, please talk to someone and never feel ashamed of what happened or how your memory chooses to handle the trauma. So she's saying there, you might remember the details differently. <sighs> but uh, what Amma said is very different on Ask of M. Somebody says, how old were you when you were and who did it? Amma says, I was six and it was my cousin. So it's not father's friends. So that's remembering the details very differently. Then there's another one. How old was your cousin and what was the outcome? Did he go to jail? She did not go to jail because we didn't turn her in. She was a young adult. I really don't want to talk about it anymore. So there's, there's another different detail. So she took, we didn't turn her in. So it was, a, it was her cousin. Another one, the person who you, were they a family member or someone you just trusted or neither? Emma says a family member, yes. And the next one, what's the most disturbing thing that has ever happened to you? And again, Amber says I was arrested when I was seven. So that's very different from my father's friends did it. I don't want to say it's very different. Um, so maybe she is remembering the details differently, but um, there you go anywhere. Very, very different. Um, you lied about SA. No, I didn't. I was by my cousin when I was seven years old. I was seven years old and I did not tell my mom till I was 12. Uh, your cousin or father's friend? Wait, what? Oh, I think she's forgotten what she posted. Uh, your cousin or father's friend? Wait, what? She's the one who said my father's friends, which is obviously forgot. No, it was not my dad's friend. It was a cousin. And when it comes to like sexual harassment, a lot of my dad's friends, yes. Harassment? I thought you said assault. Let let me have a look at the post. I was sexually assaulted by my father's friends. 
She's got me doubting myself. But I was never like, from what I remember, memories are kind of like fade in here and there. I was never sexually or physically touched by my father's friends. No. Um, I was actually arrested by a female. Is it just me? Or did you say that really weird? Um, I was actually molested by a female. So it was not a he. Oh, me saying it was my dad's friend, a hundred thousand percent. I said that for a long time. Yes, I did. Because this cousin lived with me and my parents and my brother. So for a long time, when I was younger, like especially my teenage years, I did say it was someone that was not related to me. Yes, I did. So she said it was a father's friends when it wasn't, but then it did later on I think I'm confused yes I did um Miss Natalie I think you were confused I said I was molested by a cousin but I was really um like harassed I don't know the best way to describe that by a lot of my dad's friends while in um while I was a teenager yes said assaulted definitely said assaulted not harassed assaulted which is all serious claims. So when I say that my dad's friends sexually, like, assaulted me, I mean that in the sense of, like, sexually harassed me. It's not assault. Thank you. That is a completely different situation compared to when I was did when I was a child. That is a completely different story. That's definitely not what Amber said. She said assaulted, not harassed, assaulted. And they're two very different things. Um, when you were harassed by your dad's friends as a teenager, did they ever touch you? So trigger warning, they would like touch my leg, um, like mess with my hair, like put it behind my ear. I was never sexually or physically touched by my father's friends. No. So now it's, there's no sexual anything. I was never sexually or physically touched by my father's friends. No. Does she not think people are going to look back something she wrote a week earlier and compare it to this video? She keeps everything up. Um, touch my arm, brush against me on like on purpose. Um, I was never sexually or physically touched by my father's friends. No. So I was um, physically essayed. Um, when I was six or seven years old, um, it was my cousin who did it and she was a female. Um, so then in a Q and a on Instagram, um, I said that I had like, when I lived with my dad, um, when I was 14, my dad had a lot of like men who were on lots of different types of drug, different types of drugs. Sorry. I'm starting to get a little flustered when I said that they would essay me. Um, when I use the A word, assault. Don't tell me she's about to redefine the word assault. It, she is, isn't she? Oh, God. Um, I consider harassment as an assault. Assault just means you made someone scared. So again, I'm going to read that again. Assault just means you made someone scared. Unless it's in the dictionary, I'm not going to go with Amber's definition. Hmm, wrong. Oh, look, the definition of liar. It's the fault of Amber's face. As a 14-year-old girl being hit on men in their 30s, I was terrified. I was scared all the time. So for someone, a man, um, Snowflake, to be questioning if I went through that as A, a little girl, as a six and seven-year-old, and... B, as a teenager who was 14, you are disgusting. You are everything wrong in this world. Because those stories are true and they did happen to me. And this is why victims do not speak up. And again, people are twisting my words and that'll continue to happen. Well, it wouldn't be the first time she's used the wrong word.
What did I think about Amber's poem? Can you explain the rain and petals eavesdrop poem? Yes. I went through something. I decided to share my journey of an abusive relationship. And um, my ex decided to deny all of it, which I don't blame him because why would you confess? No one confesses to being abusive. Um, so I was, I got scared because so many people were thinking I was lying. I became ashamed of sharing my story and scared. So I deleted the video. So I ended up filming a, I think it was like a 23 minute video, um, kind of replying to his rebuttal. And so after I filmed it in my gut, I felt like this isn't right. I personally don't want to keep going back and forth. So the best way for me to express how I feel is poetry. Speaking Up by Amber Lynn Reed. Let's see, who does everyone believe? Let's start gambling our life, rolling dice like knives on a platter. Using my name to put yours on lights? No, I am not perfect in any way. Just admit you were wrong and play a different song. My life is my story, but yet you've written a chapter. I am my own narrator, yet you stole the pen to deny to lie seems to me that the only quote that people mention here are the facts you lied about your name right off the bat but still called me insane is the one where i did admit r-a-p-e rain and petals eavesdrop i used the wrong word that maybe i did use the wrong word rain and petals eavesdrop i used the wrong word rain and petals eavesdrop i used the wrong word i should have used the word Coerced? Why, why can she never say that word right? Coerced? Coerced. Coerced Light. Sponsored by Coerced Light. Coerced? Which um, is where you are forcing someone to do something that they don't want to do. I've just had a hard time with this whole thing. I've cried, I've laughed, I've loved, I've lost. It's been really horrible for me. I've grown, I've learned, I've moved on healing along the way. If you go back and listen to the poem, you guys will hear in that poem that I didn't lie. Knowing what you did and saying you didn't and that he was the one who was lying. Such a lovely story. That's completely unforgivable. Casey now has to go through the rest of his life with a small percentage of people, but still people thinking he's a all because she used the wrong word. It's unforgivable. Amber just thought, oh, I didn't say Casey's, but, but people who have been following Amber up to this point knew exactly who she was talking about. It's absolutely disgusting. And it kind of feels like she's gotten away with it. She's still making videos, she's still on the internet. The story that the, the video has just lies you can prove and people still believe the rest of it, still believe that the rape and the abuse. It's absolutely disgusting and I feel very sorry for Casey. What's even worse is there's a, um, there's a clip out there of Amber singing the poem. Rain. And petals, these drop. Pa. Pa. She was singing this poem that's about being. Pa. Pa. I know it was on a live stream, I think. Yeah, it was. During, during a live stream, she's singing this poem about being. It's insane. It's insane. Oh, God, she's singing about being. Ugh. Pa. Pa. Even after all their time together, and after Amber asking for sex tips, Amber still didn't have any respect for Casey as a person. Now, I did try to come up to her as transgender before, and she just did not have it. She was mad about it. So when I went to go tell my fiance, I was scared to death. Why? Because of the way Amber acted when I tried to tell her. Little beard. I hate that ball patch. See that? See that? I had an ex-girlfriend named Cassidy. She did not look like a girl. 
She like she, her, she taped down her boobs on purpose. So they'd always think that was a boy. So it was just really weird because I'm not into that. They'd have to be like, I don't like him like that. <laughs> when they asked me that, why I wasn't just, you know, why did I just stay a girl and dress like the guys? Because that's not, that's not what I am inside. That's not what I feel inside. I want my inside to match the outside. Your ex said you got mad when he came out of trans. I've honestly not seen anyone less traumatized from uh, an abusive relationship. When people bring that up, oh my god. Literally, he was not trans when we were together. Ugh. I'm sorry, I'm just... You misgender people. It was one person who literally said that they don't care if they get called he or she. It was a f***ing accident. Like, people literally just won't get over it. Like, I, <laughs> I love how you guys think that you know this person. That's the funniest of it all. I think it's very clear who's come off worse out of that relationship. And it's not Amber. I was in a freaking... When... <sighs> I'm trying to calm down. When me and Amber broke up, I was distraught. Because that was the first serious relationship I ever had. I was so messed up from the abuse, the mental abuse, the verbal abuse. I had to go and see psychiatrists because I was having anxiety attacks every day. I couldn't even be in my classroom. I had such mental issues from being with her that I ended up for a weekend from Friday to Monday in a mental hospital. I, I don't like to relive all that. I don't like, I mean, I still relive it like every so often. Like if someone tries to reach for something like over my head, like just to get like cereal or something, I flinch. I down myself a lot. And all those feelings come back tenfold knowing I could be in the same room as her, in a courtroom with her. I, I don't like it. it. It just, it makes me, it makes my anxiety go up. But that was it. I was so messed up from her. I have very, very low self-esteem. I don't feel smart. I'm still messed up from this. I feel worthless and stupid sometimes. Or just like, no one cares. I don't know what to, I mean, I know you're not supposed to say you regret anything, but I do regret that relationship. Full heartedly, immensely because of everything that happened in it. I don't care to be her friend. I don't care to talk to her. I just want to be left alone. And I want her to quit trying to destroy my life. Quit trying to make herself look like a victim. I know she was in foster care. I understand that. But she acts like the world owes her stuff. And I hate to say it, I hate to sound mean, I'm not trying to bash any of you guys who were in foster care or had a bad life, but the world doesn't care what you went through. I regretted staying through the If I could go back in time and slap my 15 year old self, I would. I would. So. I might cry about it now, but I've healed. I have, but it's definitely like memories that make me sad, but I've healed from it and I'm stronger because of it and I've learned because of it and I know the bad in my life made me wiser. I just, oh my god, you literally, we watched Casey's video, me, Dana, Destiny, and Becky all together. This was probably a little over two weeks ago, and Destiny was clapping back. Destiny's like, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's not true. I don't know, I don't want to get into all that. I don't know. You know, like, I just know what she has told everybody else, so, I mean, I don't know. And the person, her ex, um the evidence video that they posted i didn't know that she was messaging them um plain and simple i did not know that till she posted that video so i don't know it's just not it's not fair and this is something i deal with all the time because you google my name and the sh that accusations da -da -da -da, and it just sucks i'm sitting over here 
best friends with Crystal, who is my ex. I'm sitting over here, super, super good friends with Destiny, who is also my ex. Do you think that if I ever, 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 like, ever abuse Cassidy, that... Because when people abuse someone, they they, they abuse several times. And I would also have Crystal. I would have been Destiny. Do you think that Crystal and Destiny would still be my friends? The thing is, if I was lying, I would have never said her name. I would have never said her name if I was lying. That already is a bad choice. I would have been like, so this one girl I was with, and I would have made the story a lot more entertaining. I didn't start this, um, I'll use the word journey. I didn't start this journey of making videos about Amber, trying to turn people against her. I genuinely thought I'm going to turn the haters into fans. She had plenty of haters. I thought I'm going to make a nice series about her, show all the good that's in her, and it's going to turn it all around for her. We're going to help her lose the weight. She's going to have loads of fans. She's going to be the best version of herself. It'll be a great success story. What an idiot I was. Snowflake just feels a bit stupid for the whole thing. And I was an idiot because everybody warned me. And most people did. And I, and I thought, no, no, they're wrong. I can, I can sense the good in her. The whole Snowflake Amber thing reminds me of Star Wars, where Luke thought there was still some good in Darth Vader and he finds good in him. And it ruined my reputation a little bit, because not everybody, but there was, there was a few people saying, um, this is a bad move for you, Snowflake. Um, trying to be pallet with her and, uh, and associate with her, it's, 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 a, it's not a good look. And they were right. It wasn't a good look, but I just thought, I could do some good with her. No, nah, nothing. And I'm, I'm done with it now. My joy and fun with the whole Amber thing we were trying to do has just faded. Gone. Just like me t-shirt. Faded. I've watched every video on her YouTube channel multiple times because of the, the editing for the, the ship or the algorithm series I've done. I've watched every video, I've, I've seen all of her Facebook posts, all the AskFM posts, Tumblr, everything, I've seen everything she's done online. And people were right and I was wrong, there's no good in her. Some people will still be a fan, even after this, there'll, there'll be people out there who, who still support her, and still think she's amazing. But if you think she's amazing, wait till we get a crystal. I mean, I even sent her a message, God, maybe five, six years ago when she was with Crystal saying, I hope you don't do to Crystal what she does to me. I wish I never deleted that message because in that message she admitted she had Crystal once. Hope you're well. Thanks very much, Amber. Am baby out.